we ask in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand.
Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Faithful of the Lord Jesus Christ gathered together on the second Sunday in Easter, or also the eighth day of Easter, because Easter is a time of what we call the great 50 days. The great 50 days of recognizing Christ's resurrection, celebrating Christ's resurrection, giving glory to God for that resurrection, the great 50 days. Not the, eh, not half bad 50 days, not the, hmm, pretty good 50 days, the great 50 Amen. days. From now all the way until Pentecost, because what God has done is not just good. It is not just, hmm, not bad. It is great. Amen. And we as Christians celebrate and worship our great God and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, through, through um, whose resurrection has won for us forgiveness of sin and eternal life. Great indeed. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Dearly beloved, let us come into the presence of the Almighty God, praying together as we kneel. Together. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God I, I confess, confess that I have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways through the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. God on high and on earth is good will the ones
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A proclamation of the Word of God from the Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 5. When they had brought them, they stood them before the council. The high priests questioned them, saying, we gave you strict orders not to continue teaching in this name, and yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you have put to death by hanging him on a cross. He is the one whom God exalted to his right hand as a prince and a savior to grant repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. We stand for the responsorial psalm, which today is Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart, in the company of the upright and in the assembly. Splendid and majestic, majestic is his work and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He has given food to those who fear him. He will remember his covenant forever. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his precepts are sure. He has sent redemption to his people. He has ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. standing.
Proclamation of the Word of God from the Revelation of Jesus Christ to St. John, Chapter 1. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood, and he has made us to be a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand. What we have heard, what we beheld, and what our hands handled concerning the word of life, this we proclaim to you, that you also may believe with us. our lips and our hearts as we hear his holy gospel the holy gospel of our lord jesus christ according to saint john chapter 20. glory to you lord christ mm -hmm. 
So when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and when the doors were shut, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them both his hands and his side. The disciples then rejoiced when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said, Unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails, and put my finger into the place of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here with your finger, and see my hands, and reach here your hand, and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. Therefore, many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Good morning. I bring you greetings not only on behalf of myself, but also on behalf of Bishop Ariel, who is doing bishop work in Baguio City this morning. And so, you know, as a bishop of a particular diocese, every so often, certain Sundays, he has to go and spread the gospel to the churches under his care. And it was sort of slowed down, that work was, by the pandemic, but now he's able to do, do it much more fully. And he's a very happy man, I promise you that. He's been uh, not feeling good about not being able to do that as well as you know, he would like to do, and supposed to do, so. Uh, he's uh, really excited about getting to do that. Question this morning from the Gospel reading. Why did Jesus come back? Why did he go and search out the disciples and spend some more time with them? This is the same day, the Gospel reading, from uh, Easter Sunday, but it seems like whatever information came to them in verses 1 to 18 wasn't enough. More information was needed. Just the message from the angel, I'm, uh, he's alive, and just the information from Jesus himself to Mary, uh, tell my brethren, I ascend to my father and their father, to my God and their God. Okay, good enough, but it seemed like that wasn't enough. Because after that, maybe around 12 hours or so after that, he appeared in their midst and shared with them some more. The stuff in the first, verse, first 18 verses, which we read on Easter Sunday sometimes, Tulangpa. 
So what more did he need to say? First of all, he went back. The first thing he said was, peace be with you. And the fact that he was there, the fact that he was speaking and living and moving and breathing, told the disciples one thing. Mary was right. He's really alive. And they started rejoicing. They rejoiced at the fact that Jesus was alive. They rejoiced at the visible truth of the resurrection. And that's why he said, peace. Understanding the resurrection can certainly bring you peace. You will have peace when you see that Jesus Christ has conquered death and hell and the grave. He's paid the price for our sins and he has made us alive forevermore. That's peace. All the things you have to worry about before, now you can have peace from them. And this is the point where in the 730 service, uh, Father Dino Orvina spent uh, his homilies talking about peace. And I would just urge strongly everyone in the sanctuary here who was not here this morning and all those who were watching the stream, go on the Cathedral of the King website, find the transcription and read it. I don't think the cameras were rolling at that service, but Father Dino was rolling, that's for sure, because he preached such a powerful service about peace, full of faith and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Just an awesome service that opened up our minds and reminded us of what a powerful force peace is and how that peace is promised to us in the mouth of the Lord Jesus Himself. So I would encourage you all to get on the website, Find that transcription. It might be a day or two before it's there, but by all means, don't miss that. It was very powerful. So Jesus said peace. At the thought of the resurrection, at the discovery of the resurrection, they had peace and they rejoiced. But that wasn't enough because he had to say some more. Now, why wasn't that enough? That one word, that one thought of resurrection was enough for the thief on the cross. All the thief on the cross knew was, okay, this guy Jesus, this co-crucified person, he says that today I'll be with him in paradise. Even after I die, I'm going to be with him. That means I'll resurrect. He'll resurrect. There's a resurrection. That was all the message he got. He didn't get any more. But for Jesus, just the understanding of the resurrection wasn't enough. Because... Uh, I was just see, but that's uh, all Jesus got was, uh, all that thief got was the promise of paradise. But Jesus has more for the disciples, more than just that promise of a future place of happiness, which is literally what the meaning of paradise is. Not even a Christian term, not even a Hebrew term. It's a Persian term. And the Persian concept of paradise is basically all the things that this fleshly body wants, I get. That's kind of their concept of it. Kind of a little different from a Christian concept. But that was what Jesus gave that thief on the cross, and it was the only word he got. But for the disciples, there was more. So after Jesus said peace, and the disciples rejoiced at the thought of everlasting life, of eternal peace, then Jesus said another one. Again, he said, after they finished rejoicing, alive, alive, he's alive forevermore, and so are we. He said again, peace be with you, because there was another realm of peace he was about to bring, another element of the message that the thief on the cross never got. After he said, peace be with you a second time, then he gave a deeper message. He said, as the Father sent me, So I send you. This is a second step of peace, a deeper level of peace, one that wasn't seen in Luke 23. If we just look at Luke 23 and we see Jesus' promise of paradise, well, good, we can be a paradise Christian. We can rejoice in the fact that we're on the way to heaven, sanctified, blood-bought, on the way to heaven. That's our message. That was the message for the thief on the cross. Because you see, Jesus couldn't promise him anymore. He couldn't say, thief on the cross, as my father sent me, I'm going to send you. I've got great plans for you. Couldn't do that with him. Can you imagine that if Jesus had said that? Then the guy on the cross would have said, "Uh, Jesus, uh, 
I, I can't really go anywhere right now. In case you haven't noticed, I, I'm kind of tied up. Literally, I'm tied to the cross. I'm going to be dead in a few hours. You can't send me anywhere. But some Christians look at Luke 23 and they be paradise Christians. All I have to do is just be rejoicing that I have eternal life. Paradise with the Lord. But you see, that was just for the thief on the cross because that's all he was able to receive. For the disciples, there was more. For the disciples, it wasn't just you receive peace because of the understanding of the resurrection. You receive peace because I'm sending you out. I have a mission for you. That was a second source of the peace that passes all understanding. See, paradise Christians don't get this. Paradise Christians read Luke, but they don't go into John. And they understand peace only from the standpoint of resurrection and eternal life. They don't understand the peace that passes all understanding that comes when we walk in the mission that Jesus Christ has for us. They miss out. Now, if we look at sometimes at this and we say, oh, it's so sad that the disciples didn't really get the resurrection before. You know, they, it says that uh, they didn't understand how he was going to be risen after three days. But yeah, but you know what? Don't be so hard on them. Nobody understood. Nobody in the entire New Testament until the resurrection of Christ, or even in the Old Testament, understood that the Messiah was going to rise after three days. It was written in the Old Testament prophecies, but nobody understood it. The disciples didn't understand it. Not even those expert matters in Jewish spiritual, uh, those experts in Jewish spiritual matters, like the Sadducees, the Sadducees didn't believe anybody was resurrected. Not the Messiah, not anyone else. Nobody saw it. So it shows us here in the Scriptures, especially in, uh, in, God, in Luke, talking about the same event here, that it's Easter evening visit of Christ to his disciples. It said, he opened their mind to understand the scriptures about himself. Because until we have that, we don't get it. Said it's been buried in the, in the Old Testament for centuries. But once Jesus opened their minds, oh, I see it now. He was talking about rising for three days, but, but we didn't quite get it. Now my mind is open. Now I see. Oh, that thing in Psalm 16 about you won't allow your... Holy One to undergo decay? Oh, that wasn't, no, that wasn't David. That was the Messiah. That was, that was Jesus, because he's not decaying at all, and he never will. That whole thing about, oh yeah, the three days in the belly of the whale with Jonah. Oh, that's what that means. Coming out after, oh, and they begin to see. All the Old Testament scriptures, because Christ opened their minds. So don't, you know, be too judgmental about the fact that the disciples or no one else really got the resurrection until Jesus opened their minds to understand it. But even after he, after he opened their minds and they were celebrating about the resurrection, such peace, such peace. He said, you think that's peace? Listen to this. I got a mission for you. I got a mission for every one of you. Peace be unto you. Yes, because of the resurrection, but a second time, peace be unto you, because as the Father sent me, so I send you. And there's no peace unless we have both, not the fullness of peace. We can have a level of peace, like a, a paradise Christian that only sees the part from the cross, the part of paradise. But when we see the awesomeness of having a mission from God, a calling from God, a sending out from God, oh, it suddenly becomes even deeper, even deeper. And then at the next point, the next thing that Jesus says, how do we get this peace? How do we fulfill this mission? You're going to send us out. How do we handle it? The very next thing he says, receive the Holy Spirit. We have been given a mission from Christ, which we will never fulfill without the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself did no great work, no anything, until he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Look it up in all four Gospels. In all the four Gospels, first thing you see about a mature man, Jesus, is being, uh, going to John, being baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what he saw. That's what you see. Before even the temptation, before anything, there was being filled with the Holy Spirit. 
So, as Jesus said, I've got a mission for you. Even if you remember, my mission didn't start until I had this Holy Spirit. Now I want you to receive the Holy Spirit. Be equipped. The same story is told in Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 23 told us about being a paradise Christian. But Luke 24, the second part of Luke chapter 24, mirrors the second part of John chapter 20. Jesus appears to the disciples there in the upper room and that evening, and he says to them, first of all, look, I'm alive. And then he says to them in chapter 24 of Luke, verses 48, you are witnesses of these things. So what's your mission? John, you didn't exactly tell us what the mission was. Luke did. You are witnesses of these things. That's your ministry. That is your um, that is, that is your, um, what's the theme today? What's that? Can you flash the theme up? <laughs> I got it. Uh, okay, mission. Sorry about that. That's your mission, is your witness. That's what he asks you to do. And so Luke says, I'm, uh, your witnesses of these things, six little words in one whole verse, 48, because he's telling us what's our mission. Then he says, your mission is to be witnesses. Then he tells you how, just like he did in John. He says, I'm sending forth the promise of my Father upon you. That's verse 49. What is the promise of my Father? The Holy Spirit. So Luke joins together with John in telling us the story. Jesus says, I have a mission for you. Then he says, you want the mission? Receive the Holy Spirit. Luke said the same thing in Acts the letter that he wrote to his dear friend, which sort of takes up where the gospel of Luke ends up. And he says in Acts 1.8, you will receive power when? When the Holy Spirit's come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Being his witness is the mission that God has given us. And when we look in Matthew and Mark, we see the same thing. That Easter Sunday morning, There were angels, there were different ones, there was even Jesus himself sending messages to all the different people who were there at the tomb. The disciples, Mary Magdalene, other Marys, but they always had at least two messages. One message, Jesus is alive, he's not dead anymore. And the other message, what do you do next? Mary's first mission was, go tell the disciples. Later he told the disciples in Matthew and Mark, I'm going to send you out to the whole world. They had a mission about being a witness. Even in the other two scriptures from this morning, we see this same thought. In Revelation 1.5, it says, From Jesus Christ, who is Christ? He's a lot of things. One thing he says there, the first thing he mentions in verse 5, the faithful witness. Jesus himself is a witness. And then in Acts chapter 5, verse 32, in Peter's sermon there before the Sanhedrin, He talked about the resurrection of Christ and the ministry of the Messiah. Then he said, we are witnesses of these things and so is the Holy Spirit. Again, we see the coming together, the the mission of God's people and that mission of being a witness and how it's accomplished through the Holy Spirit. Jesus came back. Why did he come back? Why wasn't it enough just to say, Today you'll be with me in paradise. That's good. Look, I'm alive. Okay, you got the message. Wasn't enough. He came back to say, yes, I'm resurrected. Have peace. But I'll give you some more reason for peace. I have a mission for you. Be my witnesses. And when it comes to being a witness, there's two levels. There's a witness before heaven and a witness before man. You know where Jesus was those 12 hours after he appeared before Mary Magdalene and the others early in the morning? Then in the evening... He was uh, appeared to the disciples. Where was he in those 12 hours? He was making a witness in heaven. That's what he told Mary. Don't touch me yet, I haven't ascended. I'm fixing to ascend to the Father. He ascended to the Father. He ascended to the heavenly throne room where no other mortal flesh had ever been. And he said, this is my witness. I'm alive, Father. You raised me up, and here I am. He made that witness before heaven. Jesus also made a witness before man. How many people did he say? The woman at the well. She says, when Messiah comes, he's going to tell us all truth. And Jesus said, that's me. You know, when Jesus uh, witnessed, he didn't go up and go to somebody and go, do you know Jesus? I was like, that would be weird. 
do you know me? You know, it's kind of strange. But he said, no. His witness was, I am that Messiah. To the man born blind, Jesus said, uh, I, uh, when the guy says oh, I, um, something about, I want to see the Messiah, and Jesus said, I who speak to you am he. Jesus was never timid to witness before man. But you know, that's also our ministry, our mission, to witness before the heaven and to witness before man. You who are serving at the altar, you acolytes and you singers and you musicians and dancers and deacons, clergy, all those who serve at the altar, when you serve before altar, you're giving a witness before heaven. Whoever we are, from the smallest acolyte to the oldest, when we take that incense boat, when we carry that boat down the aisle, we are making a witness before heaven. That's our ministry, that's our mission before heaven, carrying that boat. When we sing, Jesus is alive, that is our witness before heaven. But like Christ, we also have a witness before men. It's not just saying, let me tell you about Jesus, meeting a guy on the street and doing like that. You know what? When you feed the hungry, that's a witness before man. When you help the needy, that's a witness before man. When you visit the sick and the imprisoned, that's a witness before man. All of these things, helping the, the needy, that is a witness before man. When you take a, a mission trip, like some of the men are taking this week, that is a witness before man. Those who need to hear the gospel and sharing them with the gospel, that is a witness before men. That's a mission before men. So every one of us have that mission. We, both, we all have a mission before heaven, whether it be our prayer life, whether it be our ministry at the altar, that's our witness before heaven and a witness before men. Living out the gospel of the kingdom of God is your witness and your mission before man. When we live the ways of Jesus Christ, live the ways that he taught us in the, Ten, in the, uh, in the Beatitudes and in the Sermon on the Mount, that is a witness before men. That's our mission, to live the gospel of Christ. So we all have that. Not only the mission in the church, that's our witness before heaven, but our mission everywhere where our step falls, everywhere our foot goes. That's our mission before men. So Jesus came back just to let the disciples know, just to let you know you have a mission, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Oh, you young people, you young, uh, uh, young ladies and men who are getting to the age of confirmation. There's a confirmation class that is opening. This class will help you to stir up the gift of the Holy Spirit empowered with you and help you to be a, someone with a mission. You'll be empowered by that Holy Spirit to fulfill that mission. Don't miss it. Don't miss the catechism class which is coming. If you've not been confirmed already, if you're the proper age, don't miss it because this is actually you being equipped, doing just like Jesus said in the gospel today. Receive the Holy Spirit so that you can fulfill that mission when Jesus says, every one of you, you young people, 12, 13 years old, Father sent me, so I send you. All of you. So he came, just to let you know, you've got that mission, empowered by the Holy Spirit to be a witness before God and before men. So what I would leave you with this morning is a question. Are you a paradise Christian? who are all excited and happy about the peace you have just from knowing that you're going to heaven, that's a good thing. I mean, sure beats the alternative. I mean, that's the promise God's given us. Or are you a Christian who understands it's not just the resurrection that's the source of our peace, but it's also accepting and receiving the mission that God gives us. As Jesus says, as the Father sent me, so I send you. There's a second source, a second tier of peace that comes when we know that we are following God's plan for our lives and walking in His mission for our lives before God, before men, before heaven, before earth, before all. That's what God has given us. That's why Jesus came back in the gospel, to share that with those apostles. And it can be recorded and shared with us. Now, what I'd like to do next, we've mentioned about how some of us, uh, the men, are taking a mission trip 
I believe it's to Casmarinas del Sur. Is that close? Okay. Uh, if you're going on that mission, I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to pray and you're all filled with the Holy Spirit. I know that already. But I'd love for uh, pray, to be able to pray over you. If Bishop were here, that's what he would be doing. But since he's in Baguio, I'll be uh, more than happy and excited to pray over Deacon Ben and uh, Brother Summer, whoever else, Deacon Tony, whoever else is joining. It looks like Deacon Armand under that mask. I think it is. It's hard to tell sometimes, you know. And uh, Deacon Sherwin also. Okay, if you're on the way to Casmarina del Sur this morning, let's pray over you. So that like Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. You're filled with the Holy Spirit, I know. But let's receive an extra anointing of the Holy Spirit that you can fulfill your mission this coming week. Let's all stand together also. Stretch our hands towards these men. And there's others I know for sure, but uh, these will represent those who are going. Let's pray for them all. Eternal God in heaven, your own word told us that you send us just like uh, the Father sent you with the same power, the same anointing, the same urgency. And Lord, even as Jesus was so filled with the urgency of that calling that he didn't let anything stand in the way, that he didn't let anything stop him from fulfilling that calling. And every word that you spoke, he followed. Lord, I pray that you fill these men and those who, others who are going with that same urgency, with that same understanding that this is life and death. This is the power of God for salvation to everyone who hears and believes. And Father, I pray that they would present this mission unto heaven and this mission unto men. Lord, let the sick be healed. Lord, let the lost be saved. Lord, let the needy be provided for. Lord, minister to those whom you put under their hand, Lord, as they make this trip. And let your mighty power of your Holy Spirit be upon each one of them, upon Tony and upon Ben and upon Summer and upon Armand and upon, and upon Sherwin and upon all the others who are going, Lord. Let that power be with them. Let it be in them. Let it flow from them. And Lord, let a great report and a great testimony come forth that testimony was given in heaven and on earth that there is God, there is Christ, and He is alive and at work in the world today. Amen. Let this be the testimony, O God, that comes forth from Cosmarina del Sur. Thank you for this, O Lord. It's the first step of many, many more. We ask you, thank you for this anointing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Give the Lord thanks for you. Um, as long as you're still standing up, stand up and we'll do the creed. Let us respond in faith as we confess the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, and, and we, we believe, believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, 
and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dearly beloved brethren, as we continue our Paschal celebration, let us pray for faithful hearts to follow His call. O God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you send forth your people into the workplace, may we bring living hope. As you send forth your people into the marketplace, may we bring divine protection. As you set forth your people into the communities, may we bring loving forgiveness. As you send forth your people into the educational institutions, may we bring spiritual wisdom. As you send forth your people among the unbelieving, may we bring saving faith. As you, As you send, send forth your people amidst your enemies, may we bring, bring abundant redemption. As you send forth your people among the suffering, may we bring complete healing. As you send forth your people amidst the sorrowful, may we bring inexpressible joy. Grant us the means to reach more people with your love. As we continue this church under construction, and pray our corporate petition. Together, Almighty God and King, our dwelling place in all generations, owner of the earth and all it contains, grant unto us our allotted inheritance, we pray, and the grace to build upon it, facilities in which your people, being restored in your image, and ever growing in love for you, might become a habitation of your presence and ministers of your life to the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns together with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen father we also pray for you lift up the names of those who is who have asked for a healing touch oh lord you are our healer and we pray to you and lift up to you Father Adal, and Emily, and Faith, and Maitra, and Ernesto, and Felix, Vincente, Adrelina, Deacon Luis, Bernardo, Esperanza, Divina, Jojo, Carolyn, Joanne, Hidaya, and CJ. Lord, let your healing touch be on them and raise them to life, O oh Lord, totally body, soul, and spirit. Let's also this morning, we have a couple of weeks remaining. Let us pray over our election this, uh, that's upcoming, it, uh, that uh, the Lord's will be done. Let's pray together the prayer over an election. O Lord, o Lord our, governor, our governor, in your in perfect, perfect kingdom, kingdom no, no sword, sword is drawn, drawn but, but the sword, sword of righteousness. No strength known, but, but the strength of love. love. Yet and every authority, authority is, is from you. you including those who must from time to time bear the sword. And we must account for all our powers and privileges in electing these public servants. So guide, we pray, the people of the Republic of the Philippines in the upcoming elections of officials and representatives, that we may choose and support candidates, not according to our personal prejudices and welfare, but according to the direction we prayerfully receive from you. Grant that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes and mightily spread abroad your Holy Spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. Grant unto this generation, everlasting God, grace to believe that Jesus is the Christ, and that believing we may have life in His name. We ask this through Christ the Lord. Amen. And as Father Dino shared with us in the first service this morning, because of the resurrection, that amazing peace is with us, and we can declare that the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit.
to share with one another the signs of God's peace in your hearts. For just a couple of announcements, you may be seated for a while. So as um, Father Gary mentioned earlier, uh, for those that are in the age of confirmation, uh, we will be having our catechism classes starting May 8th and henceforth uh, until Pentecost Sunday. So if, you're, if you have a child uh, that is um, um, 13 years old, please have them register. Uh, please look for Cyril Bonuan or um, Juan Diaz uh, for the registration uh, for the catechism. It will be a physical uh, class uh, here in the sanctuary. So please uh, take note of that. Also, as uh, mentioned by Father and as we have prayed, our volunteers uh, will be going to Carab Camarina Sur this April 26 up to 28. So please continue to pray for them, for Deacon Ben and the other deacons as well as the rest of the team that will be going with them for this mission. And then for um, May 1, that will be our Food of Ari uh, fundraising project, so our Mother's Day special. So please, we encourage you to um, participate and also help invite uh, others, uh, let's say from your friends, office mates, uh, to join us uh, with this um, Food of Ari Mother's Day concert. So tickets are available. Uh, I believe outside uh, later um, after the Mass. Uh, also, uh, tomorrow will be the uh, Mr. Freeze Golf Tournament. Uh, that will be, um, we're in Cathedral of the King, particularly our church building, uh, will be a beneficiary. So please uh, pray with that. Uh, Bishop Ariel and Sister Lani Miguel, who heads our fundraising team, uh, will be joining the event to, to formally receive uh, whatever is the amount uh, that will be um, blessed uh, to Cathedral of the King. So uh, we're also thankful for that. And also for the May 31 golf tournament that will be sponsored also by Cathedral of the King. Uh, please also um, support us in that. Um, if you have any sponsors for who would want to join the golf tournament, uh, please approach myself or Deacon Leo. Uh, so we can arrange um, solicitation or sponsorship letters for you or even um, tickets. That said, uh, we would just like to update you uh, for our fundraising activity for the Gideon 300 project. So let me go through the usual breakdown of our funds first. So in terms of total pledges, we have 124 blocks. And out of the 124 blocks, Amen. We have already received a total of 5,701,121. Uh, and that's from the pledges, that's about 5.5 million. And our from Sunday offerings, that's 182,000. Uh, so that's the figures that we have. But actually, more than just the figures, uh, may kita niya naman po, no? If you have uh, visited our Facebook page, uh, we've had some posts about the progress, particularly the concrete pouring. So right now po, if you can take a peek later, may kita nyo po dyan, uh, the, ang tinatawag na zone 1 doon po sa ating um, uh, fourth floor. Uh, natapos na po yung concrete pouring. There's a curing period of seven days. So we're expecting by next week, by Thursday of next week, uh, ayusin po yung ilang mga uh, yung mga, mga work, mga support po dyan. No? Hindi ko lang po kabisado yung technical terms, but they will transfer that to the zone 2 para po yung next concrete pouring of the fourth floor eh, matapos na po. So that being said, ibig sabihin po, lahat po ng floors na necessary to support yun pong ating sanctuary will be completed once the concrete pouring is there. So we're just, uh, the next step for us is to complete yun pong sa roofing 
as well as the side walls, uh, which are also important. Um, I talked with Architect Chin yesterday, and uh, what he mentioned was that uh, we are, if, if we want uh, really, no, yun pong um, walls as well as the roof uh, to be completed in a matter of just a few months, uh, then we will need around additional 7 million. So yun pong figures natin on top of that, which is uh, yung current po natin is more or less nasa 6 million na. So we need more or less another 7 million uh, para po talagang sabay-sabay matapos po yung um, yung roof tsaka yung, yung mga side walls. And so that the sanctuary can be, pwede na po tayo mag-worship doon sa uh, sanctuary na yun. So instead of looking at the amount, uh, tignan po natin how the Lord has been gracious to us. Uh, we've been here. We started this initiative, if you remember it, in the middle of the pandemic when, you know, things are really uncertain, even in terms of when the pandemic will end and how we'll be able to come back. But uh, here we are now. Uh, the Lord has been working with a lot of people. Yun pong uh, mga architects and engineers. And dito po si Engineer De Velos, who has been really very uh, uh, active po dun sa pag-oversee ng project natin. Of course, the architect Chin. But what I'm saying is that let's look at uh, how the Lord has worked and meron po tayo mga projects. So that's why we encourage everyone to help out with all these projects para ho tuloy, tuloy lang po yung fundraising. And also, uh, think of ways, no? Uh, sabi ko nga po, yung 7 million, the Lord may be putting something in your heart that you would know how we will be able to raise those funds quickly. Eh, just approach us, um, yun pong anyone else, uh, sigur, even, even Bishop Ariel, if you have some ideas that you have there, uh, just raise it. Um, the Lord can work uh, with all those, um, even in the impossible ideas that probably we may think about. So please be encouraged uh, as we continue to, do, uh, to build this project of love. Thank you and God bless. Amen. No, one of the greatest witnesses we could do as a church is make that building grow step by step. What a witness that is to the community. When it gets to its full height, well, I believe it'll be able to be seen not just by those in the immediate community, but even further away. That's going to be a witness to the simple band of simple people believe God, who is greater than anyone knows, far beyond we could ask or think. And step by step, brick by brick, block by block, that building was finished. What a great witness that is. What a great witness it will be when it is finished. When it is finished, not if it is finished. When it is finished. Because the Lord always finishes what He starts. Amen? Amen. And all our, we have to do is find our mission within that project of love. So as we come this morning, let us remember, we are facilitating mission. We're facilitating witness with whatever we give by uh, sponsoring and helping all the different ministries around here. So with joy and gladness, let us come and help others and help the church do its witness and its mission in the, here in this area. What? That's it. Oh, yeah, she's still sitting. Stand up, please. My goodness. I forgot my mission was to tell you to stand up. Sorry about that. Anyway, here we are. Let's bring our offerings before the Lord.
Tuhan, o kagibitan, ay lalapitan, kagisisan, aking sandigan, kababayaan.
creation. For through your goodness, we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become the body of Christ. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, when we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become the blood of Christ. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we bring these tithes and offerings before you. They will be used in your church for the work you've set before us and the furthering of your kingdom. Pray, brothers and sisters, that, my, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. As we partake or come and assemble ourselves together at the table of the Lord today, we are accomplishing a mission a witness before the heavenlies, a witness before men that Christ died for us. As Paul said, whenever we partake here, we proclaim his death until we come, till he comes. That is our spiritual mission, for our mission before the heavenlies and our mission before men. Also this day, it's the second anniversary plus one of the passing of our dear brother, Deacon Ben. Seems like two years, maybe it seems like sometimes two minutes and sometimes like 200 years. But that's the way monumental people are. And Deacon Ben is a monumental person. And this morning we remember him in his second anniversary in his heavenly home. Uh, so we remember that. We know he's watching. We know how proud he was last Sunday. We see things getting going back to the things that he had taught these young men for so many years. They're, resurfacing now that the pandemic is fading and we can do more things that we used to do. We're just getting started, Deacon Ben. We're going to hit it full force where you know it. But it's for the glory of God. Let's continue our witness before the heavenlies this morning. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who has taken away the sin of the world. By dying, he's destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, Every land and every people exalt in your praise. Even the heavenly power with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Father most holy, for your great 
and you fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when, through disobedience, man lost your fellowship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find him. Time and again you offered covenant with man, and through the prophets taught him to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, you sent the Holy Spirit, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Please kneel. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. While they were at supper, he took bread, blessed, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. the same way, taking the cup filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, gave the cup to his disciples, saying, drink this, all of you. This cup is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Please stand. Together let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one cup that, gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Therefore, Lord, remember now your servants Craig, our patriarch, Ariel, our bishop, and the whole order of bishops. Remember all the clergy, especially those who take part in this offering, as well as your people gathered here before you, seeking you with sincere hearts. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation freed from the corruption of sin and death, May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to pray. Father, who 
takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Jesus died for you, and feed on him in your hearts with thanksgiving.
such a big thing to have a mission from God. And it is a big thing. But it's also a very little thing. It's as small as an encouraging word given to someone that you see who's 
maybe down of heart a little bit. It's as small as giving just a small amount to someone who might need. Sharing a lunch with someone whom you can see in your office or in your school might not have a lot. Little things, but they're missions from God to witness to the world, witness to man, witness even to heaven. So many ways we can fulfill what Jesus said when he said, as the Father sent me, so I send you. A great mission, and yet can be made up of little elements that make us witnesses of the kingdom of God. Gather, let's pray. Almighty Almighty and ever-living God, God, we we thank thank you you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. For sinners made, crucified in weakness, Christian for to reign, dwelling with the Father, and blessing thy name, unto thee be glory, honor. the Lord by your life. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen.